let's start entering the fun world of 3D. Now, before we get scared of that word, we're not gonna be doing 3D animation as our minds would think of it. This isn't like a visual effects 3D class where we learn 3D animation in like Maya or um, Autodesk, different 3D programs. That's not what we're talking about here. 3D in After Effects is more of what's called faux 3D, F-A-U-X 3D. Faux 3D is using two-dimensional layers that have no thickness to them, but we're placing them in what's called Z-space. Now, to date, we've been working in two axes, X-axis, which is side to side, and Y-axis, up and down. Well, working with 3D layers inside of After Effects gives us that third dimension, it's Z-space. And so that Z-axis is the distance from me to my lens of my camera. It's depth distance. And that depth distance is huge. So no longer am I just bound by moving this way and this way, I'm moving this way. And that opens up a whole new realm of possibilities for our animation. But to work with 3D layers, we have to understand how to view things properly. Otherwise the 3D will just look like kind of weird 2D. We also have to understand cameras and null objects, and we'll talk about those as we go. In this first tutorial though, let's learn how to take our regular 2D layers, convert them to 3D layers, and then learn how to view them properly. To begin our exploration of 3D layers, let's go ahead and make a new composition. Come up to Composition, New Composition. I'm gonna name this composition 3D Circles. We'll use the HDTV 108024 preset and we'll make our duration 20 seconds with a black background. Go ahead and hit OK. Now I want to make a brand new shape layer. Come up to layer in the menu bar, new, shape layer. And on this shape layer, I want to get out my ellipse tool and I want to draw a perfect circle that has no fill and a blue stroke that's about 14 pixels thick. You can choose a color that you like. And I want to draw a circle in my composition. I'm going to do this by clicking and dragging and then holding shift to make it a perfect circle and holding control or command to draw that perfect circle from center. I'm going to draw it about yay big. Let's come up to our toolbar and let's get out our pan behind tool. Let's select our circle in the timeline and let's move our anchor point while holding control to snap it to the center. Then let's come up to our align tab and let's align both horizontally and vertically. So now we have a perfect circle with a perfectly aligned anchor point, perfectly aligned to our composition. This doesn't have any bearing on the actual 3D work we do, but it helps us start with intentional clarity of alignment. Now let's come down to our layer in our timeline panel, and let's convert this circle into a 3D layer. And we do this with this checkbox right here. If you hover over it, it says 3D layer, and there's a checkbox right beneath it. By checking this, we convert shape layer one into a 3D layer. Now once I click on this, nothing changes aside from this little 3D interface that they've provided. Otherwise, this is still a flat, blue, stroked circle. There's nothing different about this. But if we come down to our shape layer and hit P on the keyboard to bring up position, notice what we have now. We have our third axis, our Z axis. So now we have our X axis, our Y axis, and our Z axis. So we can move this side to side. We can move this up and down. And now we can move this in the positive, which is away from us. It looks like it's scaling, but it's not. It's really just moving it further away. So it's gonna get smaller. Likewise, if I go into the negative and bring this closer to the perceived camera, it's gonna get bigger because it's getting closer to us. This is Z space. I'm gonna hit Control Z to default this back to normal. Likewise, if I hit R on my shape layer one and bring up rotation, we now have our X rotation, our Y rotation, and our Z rotation. Now rotation in 3D is a little strange because our Z rotation is flat. So it's technically now our Y rotation because it's moving along the Y axis 
it's rotating along the y-axis. That's kind of the 3D axis now. And same with x. It's kind of tumbling across our previously two-dimensional axis. So the z-axis now rotates it along the z-axis, which is coming straight through the screen. So with position and rotation, we now have that third axis available. I'm going to toggle up my layer. Now we have this little 3D interface here, and if I get out my selection tool, we can start to move things with this interface. This is a newer interface, and it allows us to rotate and move in a singular interface. But rather than doing it this way, I want to begin by duplicating our shape layer 1 three times. So I'm going to select shape layer 1 in the timeline, and then hit Control or Command D three times. One, two, three. We now have four duplicates of shape layer one. Shape layer one, two, three, and four, all of which are now 3D layers. Now I want to position all four of these layers through Z space, but it's kind of hard to see that in this current view. So I want to show you now how to add and change views in our composition panel. Come down here to the bottom of our composition and toggle down this area that says one view. This is the default. We have a whole bunch of different views we can choose from. I want to select two views horizontal. That puts the two views next to each other. And we can see up here in the top corners of these views that our original is our active camera view and our new one that we just opened is top. And we can change this by selecting between these two views and you can see the blue arrows in the corners of the view selected. And you can see the camera changing down here in this pull down when I select between these from top to active camera. And so we can change this to be anything we want, but I want this to be the default of top. Why? Because now we're able to see all four of our shape layers from the top down. It's like a bird's eye view. Think of this as if you had four hula hoops stacked on end and you climbed a ladder and looked down on them. You're now seeing the tops of the hula hoops stacked on top of each other. So now we can start to position Z space because Z space is now going through our composition this way. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to grab all four of my shape layers and I'm going to hit P on the keyboard. Now I could come and control the Z space with our sliders or I could select it and grab the Z arrow, the blue arrow, and position it in Z space. Either work. I'm gonna grab the arrows for now. So I'm gonna control Z here, and I'm gonna select shape layer two. And I want shape layer two to be positioned down in Z space, further away. And we can see in our active camera view how the further away this gets, the smaller it's going to be. Again, it's not scaling, it's pushing it away. I'm gonna put this around right here. I'm gonna grab shape layer three, and I'm gonna pull this closer to the active camera, which will make it bigger, about there. And then shape layer four, I wanna push way far away. So I can actually push this beyond the boundary of my composition, down field. So now I have four layers positioned in Z space. We can see what it looks like in terms of our active camera here, but we can actually see the spacing of those layers in our top view. So this is all fun, but what good is positioning these in Z space if we can't actually start to get a sense of 3D in our main composition? Well, I wanna introduce you to a new tool. Come up to the toolbar, I want you to come to the tool right to the right of our zoom tool, and it's called the orbit around tool. If you select and hold that, you see three different orbit arounds, orbit around cursor, orbit around scene, and orbit around camera point of interest, or POI. It defaults to orbit around cursor, but I found that it's easy to lose what we're orbiting around this way. I prefer orbit around scene. It keeps everything centered. Click on that and then come over to your active camera composition, and then watch. Watch our 3D layers now come to life as I click and drag my orbit tool. Ready? Cue sci-fi sound effect. There we are. We now see all four circles in three-dimensional space. And if I 
kind of orbit this all the way to the top view, just like we see in our left top view, we see that the circles are thin. There's no thickness to them. They aren't real 3D layers, but they're positioned in 3D space. And we can now see that by rotating these around. And this gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of how we start to design things or think of our layers in space. Previously, we've just been working with our two axes, but now that we can position these with depth or in Z space, our ability to control space and time increases all the more. Now the orbit tool is not a camera. We can't keyframe the orbit tool. It's just a means of changing our point of view. Because you can see that when I move this around, the position data for our shape layers doesn't change. So we're not like actually animating this. We're just viewing it differently. So again, to recap, we turned our regular 2D layers into 3D layers by clicking the checkbox for 3D layers. We changed our view from one view to two views horizontal so we can see our Z space in a line. We then used our selection tool to position our four shape layers through Z space and used the orbit tool to view those in a new way. In the next tutorial, we're going to talk about using cameras that, much like the orbit tool, allow us to view our layers in 3D space, but cameras give us the whole new ability to keyframe that movement, to kind of fly through our layers in Z space.